Perhaps we should leave it here for tonight. This charm is ridiculously advanced. I shouldn't have suggested putting you through this. No, said Harry. He got up again. I'll have one more go. I'm not thinking of happy enough things, that's what it is. Hang on. He racked his brains. A really, really happy memory. One that he could turn into a good, strong Patronus. The moment when he'd first found out he was a wizard and would be leaving the Dursleys for Hogwarts. If that wasn't a happy memory, he didn't know what was. Concentrating very hard on how it had felt when he realised he'd be leaving Privet Drive, Harry got to his feet and faced the packing case once more. Ready, said Lupin, who looked as though he were doing this against his better judgement. Concentrating hard. All right. Go! He pulled off the lid of the case for the third time and the Dementor rose out of it. The room fell cold and dark. Expecto Patronum! Harry bellowed. Expecto Patronum! Expecto Patronum! The screaming inside Harry's head started again. Except this time, it sounded as though it were coming from a badly tuned radio. Softer and louder and softer again. And he could still see the Dementor. It had halted. And then a huge silver shadow came bursting out of the end of Harry's wand to hover between him and the Dementor. And though Harry's legs felt like water, he was still on his feet. Though for how much longer, he wasn't sure. Ridiculous! roared Lupin, springing forward. There was a loud crack, and Harry's cloudy Patronus vanished along with the Dementor. He sank into a chair, feeling as exhausted as if he'd just run a mile. He felt his legs shaking. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw Professor Lupin forcing the Boggart back into a packing case with his wand. It had turned into a silvery orb again. Excellent, Lupin said, striving over to where Harry sat. Excellent, Harry!